Good happy Thursday evening, April 2nd, 2020. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Thursday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with your COVID-19 in New Hampshire. What you need to know update. Let's take a look. There are 415 number of people in New Hampshire who have tested positive for COVID-19. 962,977 number of people worldwide who have tested positive. Four number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 58 number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 5,148 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And this map of New Hampshire shows cases in each town and city. For example, in the city of Nashua, 40 cases are reported. If you want to see that, we will share a link with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page after this broadcast. New cases each day in New Hampshire. In the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalizations. And in the red are the deaths. And again, common symptoms, fever, cough, and difficult breathing. How it spreads. And prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for all the latest of COVID-19. drive through COVID-19 testing center opens in Portsmouth. Patients pre-screened to see if they qualify for tests. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The second day this drive through COVID-19 testing tent has been operational here at Pease International Trade Port in Portsmouth. It's run by Convenient MD in partnership with the state to try to safely and quickly determine if people have the virus. They are first screened by a call center who will determine if they should be tested. If they do qualify, they are given an appointment to come to this drive through center. The testing process here only takes a few seconds. They drive in, stay in their car, a, a swab is taken of their throat or their nose, and then sent to the lab for testing. They never leave, have to leave their car, so we maintain social distancing. And, of course, our team has the appropriate personal protective equipment to protect themselves. Officials say one of their major concerns is the safety of their health care providers. So once a test is done, they take off their gown and gloves, throw it into this garbage can, then they go inside this smaller tent where they'll change into another gown and come out and get ready for another test. Officials say yesterday they did about 10 tests, but they are prepared to do up to 100 a day if necessary. Test results take anywhere from three to five days to be returned. In Portsmouth, Andy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Windham family urges people to stay home for Pete's sake. Man in the immune compromised because of brain cancer treatment. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. In this life, 
There are only so many things you can count on. We introduced you to the Bamberg family of Windham last fall when they put out the call for random acts of kindness for Pete's sake. Pete Bamberg is undergoing treatment for brain cancer, and now his wife and children are doing all they can to keep him safe during this pandemic. I like, I like that one, too. The Bambergs have been hunkered down at home for weeks. The boys are learning from home. Mom Katie is teaching from home. Family lives down the street, but they've only seen them for FaceTime. They're trying to avoid all contact with others. Dad Pete is immunocompromised. He's halfway through chemo for brain cancer. So you can imagine that going into this, um, we already had some anxiety. The only one who's had to leave the house is Pete, twice, for blood work critical to his care. We've had um, people donate an N95 mask to him so that when he went to get blood work, he could be protected. Um, We've had people in the community sew masks for the boys and I for this upcoming, you know, round of chemo just so that he's protected. They haven't been to the supermarket or pharmacy. Family and friends are doing that for them. We've had people go to the grocery store for us and disinfect things and drop things off for us. Staying home all the time for this usually active hockey family is hard, but they're doing it for Pete and hope others will too. He is everything to us, and if you followed our story in the fall, one of the things that I kept saying was, you know, let's be kind and help everybody out. Um, and so now, be kind and stay home for Pete's sake, <laughs> because he's one of the ones that you're helping when you do stay home. Pete's next brain scan is in two weeks, and with new hospital restrictions due to COVID-19, he'll have to be alone when he has that scan, which will be very difficult. His family says if he can face tests like this alone, people can certainly adhere to the stay-at-home order and take social distancing guidelines seriously. In the studio, Aaron Falo, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Tuckerman Ravine Pinkham Notch closed by U.S. Forest Services. Several popular New England recreation areas, including Tuckerman Ravine and Pinkham Notch, have been closed by the U.S. Forest Services to encourage coronavirus social distancing. Homeless shelter for people with COVID-19 set to open. Temporary facility funded by anonymous grant. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. There is now an emergency shelter in Stratford County to house the homeless who test positive for COVID-19. The facility will let them quarantine until they are cleared. This comes as Manchester receives a $100,000 grant from a private donor. Families in Transition says the money will be used to add a new temporary location that will make it easier for people to social distance. Our mission is to protect this population as much as we possibly can, and this is giving us the tools to be able to do that. The shelter is now hiring staff for that second location. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Body found in Clamont home after fire, officials say. Investigation underway to determine cause of fire and death. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9.
At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Right now, an investigation is underway after fire officials say they found a man dead in a mobile home. This was after a fire in Claremont early this morning. Crews responded to Denison Avenue around 4 a.m. and battled heavy flames. The state fire marshal's office is now investigating how it started. An autopsy will be done today to determine the victim's cause of death. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. COVID-19 in Massachusetts. Cases in Massachusetts. State of an emergency. Governor Charlie Baker has declared a state of emergency and issued a stay-at-home advisory effective from March 24th to April 7th in Massachusetts. And here's a look at the number of cases in Massachusetts. 7,738 total cases in Massachusetts, 122 deaths attributed to COVID-19. COVID and here's a look at the graph, as you can see. Maine CDC announces 32 additional coronavirus cases, 376 total. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Thursday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Thursday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the, the green and went up. Your NASDAQ closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the green and went up. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed flat. Euro slash USD closed in the red and went down. And VIX closed in the red and went down. Dow jumps more than 450 points as Wall Street concludes another wild session. Stocks rose Thursday, led by oil's biggest one-day rally on record even after a massive spike in unemployment claims added to concerns over the coronavirus and its impact on the economy. Secretary for top U.S. health officials aimed potential threats. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News slash Good Morning America. New concerns about Dr. Fauci's safety this morning. The government is stepping up his security as he faces threats. Our chief justice correspondent... Pierre Thomas had the very latest. Good morning, Pierre. Michael, good morning. Dr. Fauci has been the subject of online conspiracies claiming that he's fear-mongering and overstating the threat of coronavirus. One primary complaint that he's intentionally trying to undermine the president, something I'm sure Dr. Fauci would flatly deny. It's unclear if Dr. Fauci had any specific death threat, but apparently the U.S. Marshals and other security officials have seen enough. The recommendation for a security detail came after a request from the Department of Health and Human Services. Dr. Fauci is going to get, if he doesn't already have, a security detail of more than a half dozen federal agents. And yes, these are the type of people in black suburbans that are heavily armed. These are crazy times, and I'm sure that with all the pressure Dr. Fauci is under, security is the last thing he needs to worry about. So these agents are going to do it for him, Michael. And Pierre, just how fearful is law enforcement? 
Michael, these are surreal times, and there's a feeling that unstable people, hate-filled people will do crazy things. Just yesterday, they charged a train engineer at the Port of Los Angeles with intentionally derailing a train near the U.S. Navy ship Mercy. Michael, he was, quote, suspicious of the Mercy and claiming it had an alternate purpose related to COVID-19 for a government takeover. You can't take chances with people like that out there. No, you, de you definitely can't, Pierre. Thank you so much. Well, hey there, G. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And thank you for watching this Thursday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Have a great rest of your Thursday evening, everyone. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another broadcast. Good night and bye, everyone.